Imagine if there was no tables to eat at, no chairs to work from, and no sofas to lounge on. We'd probably be much more acquainted with this guy. The ground. Our ancestors spent a lot more time interacting with the ground. Sitting, kneeling, laying, standing up from the ground were all a part of our everyday happenings. And most likely, hip and back pain were not a big part of our lives. These functional movements were built in and kept us mobile, healthy, and pain-free. Many Eastern cultures use the ground for resting positions. If you've ever done any martial arts, you get really comfortable with your relationship to the ground. But in our Western culture, we rarely touch the floor. We're all about comfort, and the ground is kind of hard, it's dirty, and it's beneath us. Get it? We think there are four main reasons why you should use the floor more often. Number one is mobility. A lot of natural flexibility can be gained by simply sitting on the ground. We call this organic hip mobility. Sitting cross-legged, on your knees, half kneeling, these can all be simple ways to keep your legs, hips, and spine more supple. You can also use the ground as your stretching partner to help you work on stretches like pigeon and windmills to increase your flexibility. So next time you go to sit down on the couch and work on your laptop, pause. Make the harder decision. Sit on the ground. Your hips and your back will really thank you for it. Number two is core strength. Now, there's a reason why most core strength exercises are done on the ground. And if you look at the exercises themselves, they actually mimic natural movements like rolling, crawling, and getting up. So you could spend a bunch of time doing crunches and planks, or you could use more functional movements to get the same results. And you may have a bit of fun while you're at it. Number three is a way Awareness. Knowing your way around the floor allows you to feel more comfortable with gravity. When we're scared to fall, our system goes on high alert. Our movements become jerky and less controlled. When we feel okay with our ability to navigate a fall, we feel less or even no fear. A much overlooked phenomenon in our body is our ability to sense and feel. People who have spent time barefoot know that it's very healthy for our feet to feel the ground. Our senses become heightened and our nerve endings give valuable feedback to our system. The rest of our body is the same. For the spine, shoulders, and hips to articulate with the ground gives valuable inputs into our body that in turn make our system feel more safe and confident. And number four is longevity. There's a popular study that shows that your ability to get up off the ground is actually highly correlated to your life expectancy. In other words, the more comfortable you are getting up from the ground, the higher likelihood that you will live healthier for longer. Pretty crazy, right? A simple task that can promote more longevity. So how easy can you get up off the ground? I'm sure you can do it, but how many ways can you do it? How fluid is it? And of course, we wanna leave you with our favorite ground exercises that will have a big carryover to your strength and mobility. Number one is the get up. The Turkish get up with a small weight is an excellent place to start. Keeping a weight above your head while standing up adds complexity to the movement and it forces you to get stronger in this pattern. We also love tactical get-ups, which allow you to train the efficiency and fluidity of the way you get up from the ground. This one involves no weights, you can do it anywhere. Get-ups are all about finding stability from certain limbs while maneuvering other limbs to stand up gracefully from the ground. The half kneeling switch is simple and easy. Anyone can do it and anyone can benefit from it. Start by sitting in the half kneeling position with one knee on the ground. Using your hands to guide you, sit down to your butt. Switch your legs and come up on the other side. And once you have this down, you can start to roll to your back. This integrates some spine articulation, which is a great way to work on core strength and mobility. Number three is the dancer roll. Now, a movement that often gets overlooked is our ability to move our spine and bend it, spine mobility. The dancer roll allows you to side bend and twist. And it's actually quite simple. We just move from one shoulder across the back 
to the other shoulder. Now, how you transition between shoulder and shoulder is up to you. You can also come up into a seated position to add more complexity to the movement. Now, if you start to love the ground as much as we do, we recommend that you start looking to develop a shoulder roll. The shoulder roll is higher complexity because you're putting yourself upside down. You're inverting your body and you really have to be able to control yourself to not smack down on the ground. Over the past year, I've gotten really into rolls. And if you wanna see a compilation video of me doing tons of different styles of rolls, it'll be on the screen right here in the first link in the description. Check it out. Oftentimes when we think of primal, natural, functional movements, we think squatting, lifting, running, but maybe the most primalist movement of all is just developing our relationship with the ground. So I'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite exercise that gets you interacting with the ground? So sit down on the floor, hit like on this video, subscribe to Strength Side, and as always, <laughs>